Here we are outside the Airstream with Dave, Gilly, and John, Jake, and Tim, also known as Boy and Bear. Welcome, guys. Thank you very much. I understand you've been through some extensive travel just to catch the last two days of South by Southwest. Yeah. Yeah, we had a pretty epic day yesterday, particularly. Um, we got in about 12 o'clock last night, uh, local Austin time, but that was about 6 a.m. Paris time where we came from, so... We'd been traveling all day. And Were you working in France or that was just a stopover? No, we did a, a show in France the night before. Yeah. yeah. I'm very curious. Uh, is there any difference in how you guys have been received uh, in Europe or the UK versus in the States? I think everywhere is slightly different. I think anywhere where there's cultural differences, there's just it's always a slightly different experience. I mean, even between traveling around Europe and... Um, we've been lucky enough to play in Holland and Germany and um, it's interesting crowds are always slightly different so um, we're saying that we haven't done a like a gig gig in the States for a couple of years now so this will be the the first tour here we've done in a while so is this your first time in Texas uh, no, no we haven't been to Texas. <laughs> before you came to Texas did you have a preconceived idea of what it'd be like everyone <laughs> talks about there being lots of meat here and, and uh, yeah. <laughs> it's true. People, people have been friendly in cowboy hats and stuff. Yeah. You can find that. We're friendly. Not as many cowboy hats during South by Southwest, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They've all moved to the outskirts, I guess. Uh, you know, it's funny. I was reading about you guys making this last record and not being a musician and going into a studio and having ever recorded a record. I would assume most artists have written every song, written every lyric before they go into the studio. But my understanding is you guys were scrambling to get a couple done before the session was even over. Is that right? Yeah. Do you want to answer this one? I'm hogging the mic. Whose fault okay. was that? Okay. <laughs> well, it's, it's his fault. It is <laughs> massively. Write your lyrics at the last minute, the last day. Yeah. Blood well, pressure going up. <laughs> yes. Getting a bit stressed. No, look, I think we had a good, a good group of songs going at the beginning of the recording process. And what would happen is, because the whole thing was done in four different sections, and um, every time we went into like a new session, uh, I just had, had kept writing. And something about being in the studio and a, a little bit of that pressure meant that songs, more songs just kept coming. So I think it wasn't so much about, wow, we've got three songs, let's go do a record and see what happens. Like, I think we had maybe... 13 or 14, which sort of blew out to like 18 or 19 through the recording process, which was good because those last songs at the end uh, all made the record. So. Yeah. Um, I know you guys got to spend some time uh, supporting Mumford & Son, I think, in, in at home in Australia. And then uh, other air, on-air streaming veterans, Angus and Julia Stone, who've been in here and done sessions with us. Did you learn anything from working with them that it's carried on into Boy and Bear? No. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> no, all those guys are brilliant. We yeah. sort of, we haven't toured with the Mumford guys since probably like three or four years ago, but we're seeing them every now and then at festivals and stuff, and they're obviously at the top of their game and doing amazing stuff. And Angus and Julia, are obviously, they're yeah, just phenomenal songwriters and lovely people. So, if anything, um, I think. They always say, be nice to everyone on the way up, because you'll see them all again on the way down. And they're all lovely people, so we'll try and stick it out like that. And uh, I'm curious, too, why I think, uh, I don't know where you guys recorded the most recent stuff, but I know with uh, Moonfire, you did it in Nashville. Why'd you choose to come over and record there? Was it a certain producer? Was it talent? Was it facilities? Or just to leave home and focus? Sure. It's, it's actually probably... A combination of all of those. We um, that first record, we sort of reached out to a whole bunch of different producers, and when we settled on working with Joe, he was really comfortable working in the studio, Blackbird, which is in Nashville. So, it made sense for us to come over, and you know, he's pretty familiar with that room and and the desk. And you know, I guess for us, it's also not every day you get a chance to go and record on the other side of the world, and we sort of thought we'd take the make the most of the opportunity. And the Australian dollar is pretty strong at the time, too. It's, it's plummeted since. It made sense financially. Yeah. Uh, don't insult us with our bad economy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, have you had a favorite moment in a U.S. city that kind of collectively you guys are like, wow, I love this place? Anything come to mind? 
Lollapalooza, didn't you get caught in the storm? We did, actually. <laughs> actually, we, we walked off stage, and as we were packing up gear is exactly when it decided to hit. So we weren't covered by shelter. We were just off the side in the open air getting saturated, and that was kind of fun. We ended up getting on these golf buggies, remember? And we had to drive these golf buggies way around the other side of the festival. This is a really long story, but it's amazing, so you like it. <laughs> um, and as we're driving, the rain's coming in, like, so horizontal that we're all driving these buggies sort of squinting because it's hitting you and you're all just saturated and that was the end of the story (laughs) well thank you very much guys big round of applause boy and bear we appreciate your time